I'm not going to call it a buzzword because it's real, but mitochondrial density is something that comes up all the time when people are talking about aerobic base work. Talk to us about why that's important. Why why should we care about our mitochondria? Yeah, so um, the the process that's, that our body goes through when we do longer aerobic work, it's called mitochondrial uh, biogenesis. Okay, so in simple terms, it's just the creation of new mitochondria. So why is mitochondria important? Um, mitochondria, I know we're going back to like middle school chemistry, it's the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, so... When the, the, the more healthy and the more robust our mito- mitochondria is, the more efficient and effective we can produce aerobic energy. Okay, so when we think about energy, let's just think about um, ATP, right? We need to produce ATP. ATP is energy, okay? Um, the process in which we do aerobic work, so aerobic work and anaerobic work, there's two different processes, but they both lead to the production of ATP. The more robust our mitochondrial density is, uh, the more easy it is for us, or I shouldn't use easy, the more efficient it is for us to produce ATP. The more ATP that we produce, the the more energy that we have to continue to do what we're doing. So when we think about aerobic work, we always throw around that term sustainable. Okay, so um, that's all that is. It's like, am I I producing enough ATP through this, this respiration process that's that's built on mitochondria to continue to do the work that I'm doing without fatiguing and producing lactate. So mitochondria is really important. And it's one of those cells where if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. You don't actually like your mitochondria doesn't just like disappear and fall off, but you stop reproducing it. You stop producing it. Um, and if we stop producing it, um, our efficiency in aerobic work will go down. Our capacity will go down. And this comes through, this comes through, a sedentary lifestyle or it comes through someone that's just going into the gym lifting weights on a daily basis and they're just never doing long and easy aerobic work so someone might think that they're extremely healthy right that's another conversation like let's identify healthy someone might think that they're very well balanced and healthy because i go to the gym and i lift weights five days a week but if you're not getting in that long and slow aerobic work you're missing half of the, like exactly half of the puzzle. So resistance and aerobics, I will say resistance and easy aerobics is one A, one B, and then tough aerobics would be uh, right behind it with C. Absolutely. I mean, this obviously, <clears throat> um, this more efficient production of energy allows us to extend out work so we can go on a longer hike. We can go on a longer bike ride. There's also the carryover to some performance elements inside of the gym, right? It allows us to better recover between sets of our resistance training. It allows us to better recover between like more intense work as well. So there's the benefits for extending out work and also recovering from tougher work too. And then you've also got the health benefits of uh, having greater metabolic flexibility and being able to use different fuel sources to ultimately create that energy or that ATP. So being able to use both fats and glucose to ultimately create energy for our body to be able to use. Uh, there are performance benefits that comes from that, but there's also really important health benefits that come from being able to eat a variety of foods and use them as, as energy and not just store them. Yeah, that's such a good point. And to kind of bring it home to... Um, a lot of coaches or clients, um, and this is something that I've like a, a conversation that I always like to have with people that are attempting to do long and slow aerobic work, and they always get that urge to just go a little bit faster. Um, that that's actually a sign that someone isn't able to utilize fats as a fuel source. Um, someone that gets really impatient, and their brain's like um, they're on an assault bike and they're going 52 RPM. And their brain's like, I actually can't do 52 RPM. I need to go to 58. I need to go to 58. And then they get to 58 and it's more fatiguing, but they find a flow and they, they, they find that that's more efficient. And then you really dig in and you're just like, well, how much easy aerobic work have you done over the past six months? What is your experience with easy aerobic work? And you come to find out that they've never really done easy, easy aerobics. They've just done like fast and intense aerobic work. And their bodies actually don't have the the ability to to efficiently utilize fats as that fuel source. Um, so they're they're just like put some glucose in here so I can produce some ATP so I can continue to go. Um, so that's a that's just a an interesting use case that I've found where people are just not able to go slow. Their brains just won't allow them to do it. <laughs>